It is the age of oblivion. The world has been invaded by a species of unknown origin that has infected the population with some virus, transforming us into zombies. The remaining world scientists formed a secret organization known as the Skulls. They worked on a cure but only made things worse with horrific creatures that wander the world aimlessly, looking for their next meal, looking for others to join them, and calling for the death of mortals. Many of these abominations are still locked up in the secret skull chambers that we use for experimentation. If you come across any of these chambers, I would advise you stay as far away as possible if you want to live. Age of Oblivion first started as a farming mod. The mod developer called Piper Mac took this over and now has added a huge amount of content. Is this an overhaul mod for 7 Days to Die? Well, hell yeah it is. It is definitely a mod that brings more content than most overhaul mods. When it comes to monsters and changes to gameplay, it is up there with some of the best. Right my fellow minions, let us get into the features and what to expect. When I started playing on day one, I was thrown into the desert and immediately decided to make my way to the forest biome. There were so many new creatures, new noises, monsters and different objects and buildings that I was quite relieved once I made it to the friendlier forest biome. However, that was actually short lived as I soon found the forest biome had crazy insects, strange noises coming from underground at times and a dragon that suddenly rocked up and ate me. My first night started with my initial base burning to the ground. Yes, the fire mod is in here. So my first night I had to cower in a temporary shack and watched in the distance as the house I was going to use as my base burnt to the ground. However, I will say this, I was having fun. Yes, I died twice on my first day, but I was still having a blast. Boring is not how I would describe Age of Oblivion. For farming, the mod gives you the option of sticking with vanilla farm plots or you can use a garden hoe. My first playthrough I stuck with farm plots, though the garden hoe will allow you to plant directly on the soil. Moving to food, the mod blows the competition out of the water with what you can plant. We are talking about different trees, wood related trees, vegetables, herbs and plants. It also doesn't stop at the point of just harvesting crops and adding them to a single oven or campfire. There are many workstations and add-on tools or mods that can upgrade various stations such as a churn for cheese and cream and butter. A KitchenAid, or as it is called KitchenAid in the mod, for making sugar, there is sugarcane in this mod, kneading dough and making sauces, pasta, oils and mixing vegetables. A brewing station for milk and alcohol. The cooking options are also extremely numerous. There is a deep fryer, various gas ovens, a smoker and a pizza oven. Most of these are unique as well, so a smoker you can have that for smoked fish, chicken, sausage or ham, while a pizza oven is well, that's for pizza. You can also craft a Weber grill which is exclusively for barbecued chicken legs, pork ribs, beef chili or spicy hot wings just to name a few. So this mod has a massive selection of food crafting, certainly much more than most mods. If you want immersion in the area of cooking, baking and grilling, then Age of Oblivion is your best friend. 
Besides the many crops for ingredients, there are also a large number of unique animals in the world, many of which are only found in certain biomes. So the desert biome you could find an elephant, zebra, camels, tigers or scorpions just to name a few, or maybe you're looking for a penguin in the snow biome or certain spiders in the wasteland. Killing these animals will allow you to take the carcass home and add them to the butchering workstation to hopefully obtain unique cuts of meat. You also need certain pelts or skins for other crafting options. Age of Oblivion has a story, which you are told about from the start. The Turdlinger research facility has been overrun by terrible monsters and you must take it back. However, the research center is hidden from you and you have to find it. To get into it, you will also have to have a teleporter. The teleporter, however, is broken into smaller pieces and you must assemble and repair it. To find the pieces, you must complete certain quests, discover various locations and fight various bosses, which some are certainly no joke. You will finally move to the end quest and discover where the Turdlinger research facility is and also find Dr. Turdlinger himself. Is he a nutty professor? Well, you'll have to find out. You're not going to complete the story in an afternoon or a day or two. You will also need a lot of what the game has to offer in firepower to achieve this. Age of Oblivion does not overhaul skills that much. So if you're used to vanilla, then you will already be used to what the mod has to offer in the area of perception, strength, fortitude, agility, and intellect. Even though this mod doesn't do much in the overhaul of skills, it does provide one tab that is very important. You must put skill points into this tree as without certain ones, you will struggle to advance in the game. Besides important crafting upgrades, this tree makes huge changes to your health, stamina, salvaging and harvesting abilities. Traders are pretty important in this mod. You can't set up your base in the traders as they are indestructible and you can't place any objects down. However, you can enter them at night after you lockpick your way in and you will be safe. Traders also have teleports in them which allow you to easily port to your backpack or claim block by your base. The third one I used the most, which is to teleport to my bed. The traders also have a secret trader which is underground with special items. And there is a mini boss. Doing these underground trader dungeons is an important aspect of the story. You need to do them to obtain some of the teleporter parts. Age of Oblivion is over the top when it comes to loot. Don't be surprised to pick up an airdrop or one of the oblivion chests that are dotted around the countryside that has rows and rows of schematics, recipes, boxes of ammunition and other little goodies. This is normal, it is intended, just live with it. You are going to need all the help that you can get. Now let's talk about vehicles. In Age of Oblivion, it is quite different from most mods. You don't craft vehicles. Now, don't get me wrong, you do have vanilla vehicles like the bicycle, motorbike, gyrocopter that you can still craft. However, with a bit of exploring, you can obtain some basic transport if you know how. Of course, wait for my beginner's guide for some tips on that. The bottom line is that there are many recoverable vehicles dotted around the map and these are not craftable. From a DeLorean or a Tiger Jeep with a mounted minigun that fires ammo from your inventory, various helicopters, muscle cars, motorbikes, hoverbikes and even a Batmobile. There are various vehicle traders around and with a bit of swapping, looting for vehicle master keys, you can obtain these vehicles. So it is not a matter of crafting really, it is a matter of exploring and finding the correct key or a means of obtaining the correct vehicle key. Along with many vehicles dotted around the map, there are also many hireable guards that you will come across. These guards function by spending some money on them and they will join you in your adventures. There are melee and range guards which you can hire. They also work as an additional inventory so you can dump your items and other things and retrieve them later. 
Even pets can be hired. Bring the correct items or possibly food and the pets will join you like maybe some carrots for a horse. They will then follow you around and obey your commands. The ones that I've tamed don't generally fight. I haven't ever had them fight, so I don't think this is a possibility. They follow you around and you can use them for storage. All around the map you will notice these strange trees. Now, don't get mixed up with the death tree. That is a different tree and I'll chat about that in my beginner's guide. All around the world in various biomes you are going to see these particular trees. One of them is a boss spawner and the other is a locked treasure totem. One spawns a boss from a boss key and the other spawns some loot that you can go inside and collect. The boss spawner tree does exactly that. It spawns a mini boss that you must fight. With these bosses, you're hoping to get skull tokens. Skull tokens are dropped in loot while you play the game and when you fight these bosses. With skull tokens, you can trade them with special vendors for very powerful weapons, special potions, vehicles, and items. These items will put you way ahead of your enemies. Are they OP'd? Yes, definitely, some of them are pretty OP'd, but don't expect your major bosses to be weak, so they will come in handy. The weapons in this mod are mainly separated into two groups. The normal vanilla weapons that we are all used to, and then the special weapons I mentioned that are obtained through skull tokens. Weapons like these are, for example, the shotgun, which is called boomstick, or the chain gun, my personal favorite was the chain gun. The chain gun empties your pockets of 7.62 mm ammo in no time. However, 80% of monsters will vanish in under two seconds, but the gun is excellent for your bosses. But don't expect them to be a walkover. The fire mod is popping up all over the place these days. And as mentioned at the start, Age of Oblivion is no exception. I actually didn't know it was in the mod until a zombie stepped on a mine in my temporary base on day one and it burnt down. Is this a welcome feature? Well, I certainly like it. I think it brings a new aspect to 7 Days to Die and forces you to compensate for it. Coming up with new strategies while exploring is often fun and I enjoyed this challenge. It also pushes me to upgrade my base as you never want to leave your base as wood. That is a sure way to end up in disaster. Cloning is potentially a big part of this mod. Making clones of monsters, zombies and animals can be pretty fun and Piper Mac has spent a lot of time and effort to make cloning a major feature of Age of Oblivion. However, cloning is not essential, it's not something that you must use, but you can use it if you wish to. From the start of the game, you can begin with your own form of cloning and it is part of your opening quests. This also includes animal guards and pet cloning chambers. Cloning animals like cows and chickens is a way to obtain milk and eggs, so you can potentially create zombie guards that will fight for you, just like bandits that you can hire. Exploration in 7 Days to Die mods is important. However, in Age of Oblivion, it is essential. To make sure you progress and have the correct experience, it is also recommended to use the maps that Piper Mac provides. You can use the random world generator, but it is highly recommended to use the 8K and especially the 10K map that he has provided. Some very interesting POIs on the map and my most favorite are the tower bases in the lakes. I essentially set up my main base in one of these and created a farm on the roof. It is important to get out there and explore, looking for various PRs, especially those that are required for the story. All that exploring for loot is also supported by a massive inventory and a 15 slot hotbar. In the early game and mid game I must admit I filled that baby up very often and ended up guzzling steroids every now and then just to be able to get home. Bring all that loot home to your base and use it to create many items and things from various crafting stations. Storage broadcasting is also built into the mod, which makes containers an extension of your inventory, so that you can use that to make crafting easier if you wish to.
The world of monsters is probably the biggest and most noticeable difference that you will spot at the start of the game. The mod is awesome with the massive horde of crazy concoctions. Age of Oblivion has some of the most nutty, disturbed and unhinged monsters to set foot in the world of Seven Days to Die. So if that turns you on, then you will be right at home with the mod developer's impressive horde of creatures. There are so many unique monsters at times, you tend to see more of these than the vanilla 7 days to die zombies. As mentioned, there are unique mini bosses that you will have to fight. However, as you progress in the story, there are also more difficult endgame bosses that will require your character to be a lot more advanced. Some bosses use guns as well, so this is another issue that you must take into account. My One aspect of the monsters you will come across in the game is that the dev has used a large number of sound effects and phrases from movies and popular media. So certain monsters have particularly well-known audio effects. So be aware, it may not be everybody's cup of tea, there are also unique sound effects on various food items, like when eating a fresh smoked sausage mm. or chocolate cake. Put cool Whip on pie. Pie tastes better with Cool Whip. This doesn't happen for most foods and drinks, only certain ones, but it is something that people will notice quite soon. Age of Oblivion brings its own uniqueness to the world of Seven Days to Die. Hello, traveler. What's ailing you? It certainly overhauls the game and changes it into something that I enjoyed playing. It was fun and I would certainly recommend that you give it a playthrough if you have not done so already. The Turdlinger research facility with all its crazies is just waiting for you to find it. Thanks for watching everyone and I will certainly see you in the next one.